Hey, it's Scott Mike Workman. Um, it occurred to me that if I could make a quick video just showing our current OR, it might be very helpful. Um, basically, uh, we remodeled uh, this building back in 96 and made a 1800 square foot OR that we subsequently have used uh, to perform over 14,000 cases without a problem. And so I thought, well, maybe if we give you an idea of what we're actually using now, it might be real helpful. So uh, with that in mind, we're gonna, I'm gonna just kind of walk through the OR and then uh, through the whole facility first, and then at the actual OR itself in terms of you know equipment and, and whatnot. So here we go. Um, this is actually the room here for the OR. We've got a uh, separate, um, a separate door, uh, which uh, is, is what it is. You can see we've got a fair amount of space for storage, but we don't have to have cupboards. The storage could be, uh, take place in that spare room, uh, could be anywhere, but we do tend to have a fair amount of uh, storage requirements. Uh, this is actually an area where we have, this is a blanket warmer, but it's well, we don't need a blanket warmer. It's not critical. Um, and as you can see, some of the, you know, we do have some blankets, which I don't think are a big issue. I talked about a Craftsman type cart um, for basically, a, we call it a code cart in the event there's a problem. Um, you've got one of those there. This is the actual pre-operative area. And you, know, you can see it's a small room. We actually use a couple of chairs. The patients who come in, uh, they get checked in and come back here and we get to have an IV pole put an IV on the patient, they'll be sitting here, and then uh, the doctor and the anesthesiologist will come in and meet them. The patient then will walk back to the operating room itself. And so, and as we go to the operating room, this is kind of the nurse's station. You know, we've just got an area where people can do some, um, uh, you know, writing if need be. We've got some uh, cupboards there. And not, none of this is mission critical per se, but then the patient comes back to the operating room. And here's our door, which isn't near as wide as the one you made, which I think <laughs> is a good idea. Here I am in our operating room. It's probably 16 feet by, I don't know, 12 by 14. We've got the OR cable. Um, this is an electric one. They do make some older Amstel ones that are mechanical. Uh, you can see we've got a number of stools that you know, go up and down um, you know, for the circulator, for the doctor. We have an overhead light here, but I don't, this, I don't think this is crucial either. I think that we're starting to use more of the fiber optic type lights. Um, I talked about a stainless steel table. This is our stainless steel table. This is covered with a sterile uh, drape and the surgical instruments are put on this. Got an x-ray view box here, but that's not critical either. We don't need that. Um, moving up here, this is where the anesthesiologist is. We have an anesthesia machine uh, with a, a monitor and a chair for the anesthesiologist. Uh, we have a, a, one of these Craftsman type carts for all the anesthesiologist meds and whatnot. There is some storage space for anesthesia type supplies. Um, doesn't have to be you know, where the anesthesiologist is. Uh, and then moving over to this side, you'll see that you know, there's just an area here where the uh, circulating nurse can you know, take notes. We've got some, you know, these are basically cupboards, just a small amount of cupboards for surgical supplies and sutures. Moving over to this side, I, I mentioned a electric cautery machine. Valley Lab uh, makes these. Um, you know, they're very common. It can be any size you want, but basically this uh, we have a little grounding pad which grounds the patients, and then we use what's called a electrocautery, which uh, stops bleeding. That's electrocautery. We've got a, a stool for the surgeon. I spoke about a fiber optic uh, machine. This is a fiber optic machine, and this one is actually used for uh, a headlight for the surgeon. You know, so the surgeon goes like this, and you can tell you have this and you really don't need that um, overhead light. So this is a fiber optic machine, this is a fiber optic cable, obviously the cable's got to fit the machine. Um, and then you know, moving up here, like I said, we've got the anesthesia machine, we've got an IV pole, uh, we need a couple of those, uh, like we talked about in the pre-operative area. We've got an operating room microscope back there, but that's 
we don't have any procedures at this point planned that we would need that for. And then last but not least, if you come around here, we've got our oxygen, and I believe it's a nitrous tank. These are, these are the gases, and these um, uh, basically go to the anesthesia machine. In our facility, we've actually got a separate room where we have more tanks, not mission critical. These can actually be chained to the wall, and we probably have two or even four of them, and then we've got enough um, uh, gases for the anesthesia machine. So following surgery, we go, the patient is usually on the gurney, maybe walking, they go to the recovery room. And recovery room is a little messy, but um, basically we need you know, a couple of gurneys where the patients uh, wake up on, and the gurney actually would be normally brought into the operating room, patients put onto the gurney, and you it's nice to have sidebars on this so if the patient is waking up they don't fall off that table but the recovery room is not very big you can see it's um i don't know 12 feet by 15 feet we actually have some curtains that come across to give privacy um be nice to have you know, even simple shelves you know just to put a, a heart monitor on and then just store some simple supplies but you know nothing fancy per se um Kind of the same thing over here. We've got uh, storage space um, for supplies. And we also have um, just a spot where we can put the monitor in here. We do, um, we do need oxygen in here, but I think that we can keep it simple and actually have an oxygen cylinder uh, in the recovery room, one or two potentially. So, and then um, I'm going to Tell you, let's walk this way. And we talked about the you know the uh, area where the nurses work. We have two rooms where instruments are uh, taken care of. One is the soiled utility. Dirty instruments are brought in here. There's a sink where they're. You, know, you can't see this here, but there's a bunch of instruments that are soaking. Uh, they're soaked there. They're washed, and then they're, they're you need some uh, you know, some cupboards in here, and you know they're, they're wrapped up with sterile paper and brought over to the clean utility room. And that's here, this is where the clean instruments come into here. And the uh, instruments are then put in what's called an autoclave. An autoclave is a uh, heating device that also has pressure. It goes for about 20 minutes and we need an outlet, uh, obviously for that in here, electrical outlet. And, don't necessarily have to have all these cupboards and whatnot. They would be nice, but clearly we need something in the, the dirty utility room um, you know, to put these autoclaves on. So that's basically it. Yeah, we've got another door coming out of here. Um, we're gonna upload this to Dropbox. Hopefully that'll uh, give you a little better idea. Well, one other thing um, wanted to touch on is, you know, in the operating room, in terms of, you know, surfaces and whatnot, all we have is, uh, is paint. We, uh, we use paint here because one can easily wipe it down. Um, we, you know, it actually goes down to the, you know, down to the floor. We've got just a, uh, I guess this is a vinyl floor uh, in terms of that, you know, something that can be mopped up. Really don't want any tile around here or any grout because that, that isn't easily cleanable. The health inspectors don't like it. So uh, from my perspective, if we had like ideally, if we had like a tough you know, epoxy or you know, some sort of paint, just painting the walls. And if we had a um, you know, vinyl type flooring, that would be ideal. I think that in, in looking through the uh, spreadsheet for what's planned going forward, I thought I saw a bunch of tiling and. Um, I've never seen tiling in an operating room or in an you know, operatory or ambulatory surgery center just because of the grouting and the problems with that. And so uh, my thought would be to uh, you know, kind of kiss, keep it simple, stupid. And all we really need here is a wipe down surface. You know, these are basically just uh, Formica. And we've just got Formica um, uh, surface there. It's easily wiped, you know, wiped down. And just, I mean, these are actually melamine cavern. Uh, and I think we got these at Home Depot uh, in terms of this. So nothing fancy per se. And this is, like I said, we've done over 14,000 surgeries without a problem, knock on wood. And uh, so anyway, so I'll 
we'll upload this to Dropbox and we can always come back and give you more um, you know, detailed information in terms of it. The one other thing, um, are you still on? Yeah, totally. The one other thing that is important is fairly close to the entry to the operating room, you need to have a surgical uh, or a sink where the surgeons wash their hands. And so, you know, I don't know if you can see this here, um, ideally we would have one you know, that moves his foot operated. Although we are now going to, come on around here if you can't see it, we're now going to an alcohol-based prep so that you know, currently, whereas I used to scrub my hands with a scrub brush you know, for five minutes, currently all we do is we just put this alcohol solution on our hands. Um, it dries within five, you know, it dries within probably two minutes. I walk in the OR and I'm ready to go. So um, if we could, that might be a, a way to, um, I mean, that's probably the way we're going, going forward. Uh, so anyway, all right, thanks.